one of the things that used to be a big problem for us was lap races because we you know you have well, you have a five, let's say you have a five lap race and um you you and it has to come across the finish line well suddenly if someone gets lapped which happens quite often it's hard to set your your minimum time for the race because if the minimum time is you know whatever it is here and someone gets lapped then when they come in with one lap to go they'll actually be read by the system because they'll be over that minimum time and that was problematic and what's happened is we've turned this now into something that's really a good thing so the, the thing to remember is this uh, if you have laps like this race had five laps this is the fat bike blitz in this in february that's exciting race if you look at the results uh, look at these top three people you know within 14 one hundredths of a second okay look at that wow and and they were like that all the way around the course uh, five lap race uh, here's the thing with laps if you have a race that's got laps it has to be set right here and then just like with anything else you have to set a minimum lap time just like with a minimum race time now you have to set a minimum lap time and while we still need to set the minimum race time absolutely need to set that it's almost a non-issue because the way this thing works is with five laps it's not going to put someone into the results until their fifth read and then that and that doesn't count their start read this race had a start had a, had a chip start okay so that doesn't count and then every time they come across the mats it'll check and if it's their first time across the mats then um, it'll fill it in here and it won't count that as their finish time no matter how fast or slow they are second time across the mats it'll fill in here it won't count that as their finish time the third time across the mats the same the fourth time across, and finally the fifth time it will give them a lap five time but that's when it will also then count them as a finisher okay I'm kind of proud of the lap utility. It's it's a really nice utility because, for one thing, you can look and see if anybody's still on the course. Now, no, now of course in this race because it was such a long bike race, we had some DNFs. We had 35 people, and let's see what we had for start times. How many start times did we have? So we had 35 start times, um, and we had 35 people complete the first lap. And then 34 people complete second and third. So somewhere on the second lap, someone dropped out. And then the field remained the same. And then somewhere uh, on the fourth lap, before they finished the fourth lap, three people dropped out. And then those people finished. But the point is, it's a nice way to keep track of how the, you know, how the field is doing in terms of did we lose anybody. So when you get to the end of the race, are, you know, it's a lot easier to say, are we done? Well, when... Your, your last lap rep has the same number of people as uh, the lap before that, you're, you're probably done. You're probably done. Um, it also does the lap times. Okay, so that's kind of cool. And if you look at this, um, you can get their lap times right here. So these are the women. There weren't that many women in this race. Let's go and let's look at the men uh, lap times. And so it sorts them uh, by lap, lap one, and then lap two. So who had the fastest times? Lap three, lap four, and I must not have done a, I must not have actually uh, did a, um, oh, uh, create text files. Let's see if that, what happens if I do it now. Now let's view text files. Let's see if that, if we have that. Uh, yeah, there we go. So now we have our, uh, our our lap times, okay? All right. Um, so it's pretty cool. And there's almost nothing to do here. It takes care of itself. The only thing to remember is that don't panic because, uh, let's see here. Okay, I don't have the data in here right now. I don't have the text file, actually. Um, uh, don't panic, though, because as they start to uh, build up here, you won't see anything here on a lap-by-lap -lap basis because these are the this is the finish times, okay? And uh, after the first lap, they won't show up. They won't show up here until the fifth lap because this 
screen is almost synonymous with this screen. Okay. Now I don't have I don't have my uh, RFID data or my text file intact here, or I would be able to show you that. Must be uh, must have done it on another computer, and I didn't put it in here, but that's okay. All right. So again, lap times. Uh, it's it's a nice way to keep track of how the race is developing. And of course, now it's gone altogether because I clicked on that. All right, but it's it's a nice way to keep track of how the race is developing, and uh, we can print it out and. It's, it's, there's nothing to do. The thing to keep in mind is just don't be alarmed when you get someone that comes by for lap one and they show up here, but they don't show up here. They're not supposed to. They're not supposed to see this here until they come past on their last lap. The absolute only drawback to this, the only drawback to this um, lap times concept is um, if there's a missed read on a lap. Now, that hasn't happened yet hasn't happened yet but uh, if there is a misread on lap one for someone then when they come by the second time it'll show their first lap and that's when you have to start inserting times and it's pretty easy to do but um, that's the only concern and this since we have such good read rate with our system it hasn't been an issue all right that's how to use the lap time component of, uh, of our software thanks for watching